Hey there, so I finally decided to try out SteamOS. Now, I decided I'm going to try it out on the B-Link SCR5 mini PC. Now, this is the original one that I originally bought, which is rocking a Ryzen 5 5560U. Not exactly the most high-end system, but I was curious how a system like this would actually end up handling SteamOS. Now, the way we're going to be doing this is by installing Hollow ISO. Now, this is just a customized version of SteamOS that you can actually run on pretty much any system because Valve still has not released the full installable version of SteamOS yet. And that is SteamOS 3.0, not the old version that was based on Debian. But I pretty much already ran through the installation process on here and it was pretty much painless. There was really no issues whatsoever. And very quickly, I was able to get the system up and running, which really impressed me. But overall, we're going to be jumping in and trying this out in a few games so that I just ended up installing. These are pretty much first impressions. I just wanted to see what the out of the box experience would be like in turning this little system into a steam console because really the big benefit of something like the steam deck and just a console like experience is the ease of use if you end up making things complicated all you have is just another pc so we're going to try this out on a few games see what the out of the box experience is like now the first game that i wanted to actually jump in and test out was actually crisis 2 here you could see it running and of course we have the very useful steam overlay here where you can actually access and also you can enable fsr currently if you're using the big picture mode launcher i guess you could say for steam when you launch a game and play it you're limited to 720p that is the maximum resolution that it will actually end up going to so because we're at 720p using fsr actually ends up cleaning the image a lot better than if we're just running things at native because it's essentially being scaled all the way up to 1080p you can see when i switch it over to integer scaling it just squishes it down because because we are of course running 720p on a 1080p display here but with fsr it does visually make things look better though there is a small imp impact to the performance but the performance overlay here also gives you a lot of very useful information here and really this is an overall nice feature here i'm going to leave fsr on because it does make it look better the performance impact isn't really that drastic but we are running this game at 720p right now and pretty much all of the games that we're going to be testing are at 720p you can can play the games at a full 1080p resolution if you launch them from desktop mode but i think that 720p actually lends itself really well with this apu here and again i wanted to just try out the out of the box experience but with the high graphics settings which are actually the lowest the level of performance that we're getting out of this is more than adequate and you're actually going to have a very very nice experience and of course fsr is doing a lot to make this look pretty decent on the 1080p display that it's hooked up to right now if we were just running this at the native 720p it could look a little fuzzy and we're not sacrificing too much for fsr to improve the overall image overall i'm really liking the implementation of fsr here because it actually does make things look noticeably better and it makes it a lot more tolerable to play at such a low resolution here now the next game that I took a look at was Alien Isolation and this is running with the ultra graphics preset but of course we are at 720p but FSR is on and like I said I think that this resolution really lends itself really well with this APU because we are getting some fantastic levels of performance here. Overall you're going to have very little to complain about here and I'm so far really really impressed with this because we're able to make a really functional Steam console right now that if you just hand it to somebody and wanted them to start playing games games they're going to be able to start doing that without a problem especially because so far every game that i've launched has launched with the appropriate default settings to get the best level of performance now this wasn't the case with all titles as you can see here with monster hunter rise it defaulted to the game being at the maximum graphics settings and that ended up giving us a pretty rough experience that was very close to a 30 fps average until i manually went in and adjusted the resolution scaling because it was actually set to 150 percent resolution which was significantly higher than it really should be once i set it to 100 percent the level of performance was more than adequate though not as good as i'm used to out of this game still overall a very playable result out of this just not as good as a lot of the windows experiences you can have with this specific title now batman arkham city gave us some pretty decent levels of performance here also we are running with the maximum in-game graphics settings and overall the results that we were getting here were more than adequate again 720p but fsr is doing some really nice work to make this look really really passable on my 1080p display but of course if you're hooking this up to a 
4K TV or anything like that, you might actually end up running into some visual issues here. But at least on a 1080p display, this looks more than passable. And of course, another fantastic gaming experience overall. Really one of the only duds that I got while I was doing my very limited testing was with Bioshock Infinite. Now the reason being is that it now uses a third party launcher and that third party launcher was the culprit in preventing me from actually being able to play the game. It's definitely an annoyance, but not one that really was that common. Now another title that I checked out just because it was pretty much at the top of my compatibility list is Alien Swarm, a top down alien shooter released by Valve that is a decent enough experience overall, the one that didn't really ever receive much love from Valve in terms of development. Still a pretty enjoyable game and it does have some pretty nice performance on here though there are some noticeable stutters here and there. Especially as the combat becomes more hectic there are some pretty noticeable performance issues here as you can tell by the frame time charts. Certainly not a great experience but we are running this with the maximum in-game graphics settings. Though being a source game that's not necessarily the most demanding thing. Still the longer that you actually end up playing the game the better the performance ends up getting so it seems like it just has some issues with things that need to be cached. I also gave Borderlands 2 a go and overall the performance was really decent. This was running with the auto graphics settings which most things were set to high or medium. Overall the result that it actually gave me was more than adequate though there were some noticeable stutters throughout the gameplay. It wasn't anything to ruin the overall experience. It's just something to keep note of. You're not exactly going to be getting the most ideal experience here but it is still going to be at least a passable one. Certainly one that if I encountered when I was younger I probably would not have really cared. I would have just powered through. So it's definitely some performance issues here but not game breaking levels. Now because I've been playing through Dead Island 2 recently I decided to check out Dead Island 1 running on here since it seemed like it would be far more appropriate to run on a system like this and overall the result that we got out of this was more than adequate. It certainly wasn't spectacular especially for the age of the title I thought it would perform a little bit better but the results that we got were at least passable enough to make this playable and of course FSR is doing a lot here to make this look visually quite nice on a 1080p display right now because again we are running everything at 720p because that is what the steam ui launcher will just default to unless you go into desktop mode now i also decided to give a go for dishonored since arcane just came out with Redfall and that ended up being such a disappointment I had to go back and remind myself why people even care about them as a studio. And thankfully this game runs beautifully on here giving us a extremely high FPS while looking visually great at its maximum graphic settings. Arcane has never had a realistic graphics look to their games. So I think that the criticism on Redfall in terms of how it looks visually is a little overblown just because Arcane has always had their games look very stylized like this. But as for the overall gaming experience, this is significantly better than anything in Redfall right now. And you are going to be able to play through this game more than comfortably with SteamOS. I decided to also hop on Skyrim. Now Skyrim originally wanted to set its default graphics to ultra. Doing so pretty much ends up giving you a less than 30 FPS gaming experience. You're looking more at around 28 FPS most of the time. By going with the very high graphics instead of the ultra we're actually able to bump our performance up pretty significantly to the point where i would say that this is the most ideal way to play the game you can certainly set things lower to boost your fps even more if you want to have a rock solid 60 fps but if you want the balance of the visuals and good performance then going with the very high preset is the way to go and the overall result is more than adequate you're going to have a great time like this now i tested a lot of older titles so i did want to try something else that was a bit more modern and just as i expected god of war was performing pretty awfully on here it was very very frequent stutters a lot of the times things would end up freezing to the point where i would think that maybe the game itself was about to crash and overall it was just not a great experience at least for this specific system it really is relegated to older AAA titles and indie games these newer triple a's really just don't function very well with it but what i've learned from all of this is that 
Steam OS is actually a fantastic experience. Of all of the titles that I tested today, I only ran into one that gave me any real problems. And this one in particular, it's not like it was a great performer on Windows anyway. It's just the fact that it's actually running and giving me some kind of result was impressive enough. So would I recommend installing Steam OS on a system like this? Well, if you're looking for a way to turn a system like this into a console, it's a great experience. A lot of the games run really well on here. I still need to test a lot more, but so far, at least a lot of my library is marked as being fully compatible. And with partial compatibility, it's almost 80% of my entire library. So I'm pretty impressed with that so far. And of course, because it's built around Steam, it also has remote play on here. So if you have a game that you can't exactly run on something like this, but you have a more powerful desktop PC, you have an easy way to stream your games to your television for those really demanding titles that this can't run natively. But overall, if you're looking to take a dip into Linux gaming, I would definitely recommend trying out Hollow ISO because it has been the best experience I've ever had with Linux in terms of gaming. I was seriously, seriously impressed.